Hi there and welcome to Lorena's Labyrinth. My name's Anna Pirelli. The comments that you see here are my views, beliefs, opinions, and sometimes they are not even my fully formed views, beliefs, and opinions. However, they are my understandings. Please do retain an open mind and reflect on any of the content and your comfort levels. If your views differ, please feel free to leave a comment. Also remember, it is possible to disagree in respectful ways. My way is not necessarily your way and vice versa. You might also find that some of the content on this playlist um, in regard to spiritual or universal laws, it resonates with you, meaning it feels right to you, while other laws may not feel right or they may not feel comfortable. If this is the case, the information is either not right for you or it is not right for you right now, and it might never be right for you at any given time. It really doesn't matter. As an earthy and practical person, I can put my hand up with all honesty and say that I have at different times had the same feelings about some of the content in here. And with some of them, I still have a level of scepticism uh, within my viewpoints, but I choose to retain an open mind about the things that I don't fully understand for a few reasons. Firstly, because I believe it would be supreme arrogance to think that we all know all of the answers while we have a body. Um, and because what is right for one of us is not necessarily right or suitable for all of us and I choose to respect the differences. Please do leave your uh, opinions, beliefs, uh, feel free to argue the points in a respectful way um, with any of the content on the slides and even my interpretations and if you feel that you can add clarity around some of the content we would all love to see it. Thank you. For now though let's explore the laws. All creation is governed by law. The principles that operate in the outer universe, discoverable by scientists, are called natural laws. But there are subtler laws that rule the hidden spiritual planes and the inner realm of consciousness. Contained within these laws, or conditions, is the true nature of matter. Knowledge of these laws has an effect upon the mental urges. Mind is the builder. Stay in full mindfulness of the application of universal law as related to self and to others, and know that in love all life is given, in love all things move. In giving one attains, in giving one acquires, in giving, love becomes the fulfillment of desire, guided and directed in the ways that bring the more perfect knowledge of self as related to the universal, all-powerful, all-guiding, all-divine influence in life. Love is life. When we go back, merge with the God Source, in some infinitesimal but profound way, we expand the mind of God. Our higher self always points the best and most perfect way and it is ours to listen and choose or reject what we hear. It does not blame, but patiently tries again to show the perfect way, the loving way. All of creation pushes forth. We are ever becoming. Identity ever remains. Universal Law Number 5 The Law of Ascension the law of ascension defines the high vibrational frequency with which the soul of an incarnational being is resonating. When the illusion of separation from God and God's self is lost, the vibration of that person rises to the point of ascension. No longer does this mean that the incarnational personality leaves the earth plane to live a finer existence. We are meant to bring our loving energies to our everyday existence becoming an example or role model for others to emulate. So some people are going to look at this law and ask themselves or ask us, what is an incarnational being? Well, my understanding is that we're talking about a person who is currently in a physical body walking the earth plane right now today. The philosophy or idea is one that embraces the concept of reincarnation where a person lives their life on earth and then they shed their body and then this um, soul or spirit is reincarnated into another body after what some of us would call death. So this becomes what uh, we refer to as the ongoing cycle of life and death. 
Um, references to vibrational frequency refers to the speed in which the energy of the aura body is moving. And you can read more about this. I've done a video on uh, chakras and auras. It's in one of the playlists. You can go and have a look at that and that should explain it a little bit more to you rather than focusing on it here. Anyway, as the energy of a person's um, or as the vibration of a person's aura increases it's said under this law to be ascending it's speeding up and the person starts to lose the idea of being separate from the divine creator um, and i'll try and outline this um, with an image actually i'll see if i can find an image but i might not be able to so basically it's the idea that all of us, each and every one of us, every single person, every single soul, every animal, every sentient being, anything that can feel um, as in sensation or emotions is a product of the divine image and made manifest. It's come to life, you know, quotation marks, because it has been energized by the God source or the creator, whatever you want to call him, her, right? Now, in my mind, trying to rationalize and process this on a logical level i imagine um, some kind of all-encompassing sentient being if you like that is a shining light that pulls little bits of light off themselves and that becomes the spark of all life for all of us so this um we're looking at creation theory here and i think i saw it written somewhere and i thought well that kind of resonates to me that um we are all created individually as a spark in the first instance and then when we become embodied that little soul spark that part of god goes into us god goddess whatever you want to call them um anyway where i'm going with this is please understand i'm trying to explain something that pretty well is indescribable uh, beyond description but my understanding of this lies with the fact that if you think about the Christians or those people of the Christian faith and Christian churches, they refer to, you know, God is dwelling in my heart, the Holy Spirit and that kind of thing. And then some of the pictures that you will see that the artists have drawn over time um, has a picture of a flame in the heart centre. Now, I find that a very interesting thing because I look at that and I think, well, that actually does reflect this business of the God spark um, that these laws refer to and um, the other reference to the god spark if you like is when people use the word now my pronunciation may be australianized but i believe the word is pronounced namaste or it could be namast depending on where you live um, but that word translates i believe as i see the god within you and so this can be uh, something i learned to adopt many years ago that even when you're faced with somebody who exhibits some really horrendous uh, behaviors towards other people you can look at them and you can go you know what I still see the God spark you know what I mean I am aware that where anybody is at any given time is the perfect space for them because we're all growing at our own rate our own level following our path now so going back to the law and the process of ascension is this thing where people their vibration speeds up their awareness increases and they become more aware that they actually carry that spark within them and they have a desire to walk their path on the planet if you like um, representing god and being a role model to other people of love compassion kindness um, so they're said to ascend um, once they recognize that they have got this god spark and they're walking their path so i'm talking about a process here um, right so let me just think about how i'm going to phrase the next bit so i'll just read directly from my notes here right as the person's vibration rises and escalates they, they become aware at a central core level that there is no separation that the creator god goddess lies within all of us and that we don't have to leave our body to be able to unite with the creator or spirit which is in the past people have thought that you might need to die your physical body needs to die to make that connection well this is saying no that's not true what this law says is that we unite our mind and body and emotional centers together with our spirit center that god spark inside of us and we go about our daily existence bringing love to those people around us and being a positive role model and to be honest in my viewpoint if a person acts in a way that is superior to others and puts other people down then they're acting outside the law of ascension or we could say that their god self um 
is vibrating quite slowly. Well, to some extent, yes, it is. But um, a wise person or somebody that has ascended and is aligned with their God self, this is, of course, my belief. And it does sound a little bit judgmental in the translation, but that's not my intention. If a person is aligned with their God self, then they are living with the attributes of respect, regard and consideration for people around them. I believe in my observations, the problems occur with this is when people have not fully raised their awareness beyond themselves. And I think a lot of this is probably held back. Actually, I've got really big views on why um, people's growth is diminished um, in more recent times. And a lot of it is potentially because they're using substances rather than focusing and reflecting and meditating on their discomfort and trying to find meaning and understanding within it they're actually suppressing their feelings which delays that ascension process if you like and and it um, inhibits their capacity to develop awareness and understanding of who and what they are and the meaning and purpose of life but anyway that's just one thing there um, is it a problem that people think that they're gods or goddesses only when they think this is my views as I say only when they think that their divine spark or their core essence is somewhat superior than the core essence that lies within because every single one of us that's on the planet is um, quite simply we're all and I don't mean this in a minimal way because this is where words can be misunderstood every single person is born with an opportunity and a potential to do and be great things and when a person is aligned with their god spark or their divine center they have a willingness to act in the spirit of brotherhood love regard respect consideration towards all sentient living beings okay but they understand that there's a purpose for everyone and everything and that nobody's purpose is more important than the rest of the people's purpose we are all important everybody has value and everybody is growing at the perfect rate for them and this is why you see these things out there saying i am perfect i'm perfect right now i am perfectly placed because yeah right now today everybody is perfect does that mean that they stop trying to grow, develop and evolve? Absolutely not. We should all strive to continue to develop our awareness and um, raise our vibration, which falls into this universal law business of um, ascending, right? As we ascend and tap into um, our divine gifts, if you like, and we start to walk our divine pathway, well, then we are letting go of that idea of separation now the other thing that i would think and i think this is a really good conversation piece for me i see two divided ways of looking at the um this whole concept of illusion and separation now for me many years ago I mean, I used to try and battle along. I didn't know about angels and guides and all of this kind of stuff. And I just sort of stumbled upon my path of of developing, if you like, after a few things happened. And then I became aware of guides and angels and I consciously started trying to develop my energy fields and to raise my vibration. I had no idea what I was doing, I must add, right? Um, and then at a different stage, so we're talking about over decades here, and then somebody blew into my life when I was in a particularly bad way and they told me that because I drew on the support of my guides and guardians that I was um, not an independent person and I was not an independent spirit or whatever. Now that really shook me and I took that on board because I know that with my astrology and that kind of stuff that one of my purposes was to become an independent person. What I realise in hindsight is that that was very unhelpful and unhealthy of that person to say that to me because being an independent person is totally different to being an independent spirit. Um, as a spirit, we all work, work, if I can speak, work together collectively for the greater good of mankind the planet or whatever so there is no shame in calling upon the support of your guardians and your guides because at the end of the day that's what they're there for so 
to me, harm happens when people think their way is the right way and they impose their beliefs on another person. Um, these days, of course, and for many years now, I've kind of disregarded what that person said. It took me actually down a pretty dark pathway. I had to fight to get myself out of it. So can we ascend and descend? That would be a question, wouldn't it? I would say that once we've ascended, we develop that knowledge, even if we don't feel it all the time. So I believe at one stage in my life, I went to great heights. And then over the course of life, because I stopped um, doing the things that I should be doing, which was actually the purification of the aura, listening to my own inner guidance, um, and all the rest of it, I became consumed by earthly problems. And I wouldn't say that I descended because the knowledge stayed there, but what I lost was the joy of life, if that makes sense. So do people think they're gods and goddesses? Yeah, but is that a bad thing? I don't know. You tell me. Depends on the person, I suspect, and depends on the context and the situation. But it'd be a great discussion point. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment. I'm off now. I'm going to get ready for the next one. See you later. Bye-bye.